58% of Australians want UBI. Have we become lazy? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article from the ABC News of all places. Discussing, the majority of Australians would welcome a universal basic income, according to a survey. Now, I looked at an example from Finland back in, well, the 11th of February 2019, so quite some time ago, and there it failed. It failed. It made people feel better. You know, made them feel a little less stressed, but it didn't really improve anyone's anyone's potential in finding employment or encourage them to find employment at all. Made no difference. So, all the intensive purposes of you know saying that you will have all these financial savings because we can get rid of the welfare uh, apparatus, and uh, then people will be encouraged to work because they won't lose out on their welfare when they're working. It, none of it worked. None of it happened didn't exist can you imagine here's the thing any anyone advocating for ubi here's the question to you can you imagine the unions not just rolling over and letting every centerlink employee getting fired and replaced with a ubi so you're fired now and here's your little ubi can you imagine australians accepting a ubi for the richest people in the country and not getting jealous it would devolve so quick into different special interest groups and people wanting their own special version of UBI. You know, I'm, you know, a, a single mother living in the country needs a special UBI. Or bald men of German descent with beards need their own version of UBI. I, I think that's especially important. But, I mean, here's the thing, guys. It, fundamentally, the question I put to you, are Australians becoming lazy? Are we becoming a lazy nation now that people are calling for this stuff? How can you expect to get something for absolutely nothing? It doesn't exist. Not in nature. There's always a price to pay. It's just hidden. Most people don't realize that. Anything from the government that's free, you pay for it one day or another. I, I honestly think it's a, it's, it's a fantasy of the bludgers. That's what I think it is. So let's have a look here. And that could just be my own bias coming through. You know, I'm, I'm a first-generation Australian born of an immigrant that, that migrated over here. So I'm, you know, the way I was brought up is, let's just say I've got quite an independent streak as a only child. So that's probably just evident in my opinion to this. Maybe others can put a different argument to me. But still, nothing is, nothing is free. There's always a price, guys. It's always going to be too good to be true. So nearly two-thirds of Australians say they would support the introduction of a universal basic income according to a new poll. I mean, honestly, I would if it, if it meant getting rid of all of the welfare state entirely, all of the apparatus, all that huge money that you spend on that fire, all the people managing it. We, you know, we had a look at, you know what, let's go to, we'll go to Heiser Says, and we'll just jump over here and have a look at and where was it? Uh, calls to boycott, worsening. Here we go. The welfare card. And in here on the map, we can see. See all of these numbers, guys? These are all Centrelink offices that we have here. So just think about it. All of these Centrelink offices we could shut down, save money. What would happen to all the people? I mean, if it's a UBI, it can all be done digitally, guys. We're all going cashless anyway. It doesn't really matter, does it? All people can just automatically get deposited into their bank. There you go. Oh, and then, you know, why not just implement all the same rules that you have on the UBI as well, guys? Uh, as On the in, Indu card as well. You know, you can't spend your UBI on any alcohol or any things. 80% to 90% of it will get put in a special bank account. I mean, come on. It, it's, it's, it's just ludicrous. It is just utterly ludicrous. The fact that this is even getting mainstream media attention is just a bloody joke. And it's not just ABC. It's other, other outlets are talking about it as well. People are going, oh, the robots are going to come and take their jobs. They've been saying rubbish like that since the Industrial Revolution. That means you just need to adapt and get new jobs. That's the reality of life, guys. Any of these utopian fantasies about getting taken care of and not having to work... They're exactly that. They're fantasies. But there you go. I mean, we'd have to shut down all of these offices, guys. We wouldn't need it anymore, would we? Why would we need it? Probably maybe one major office. You know, what's that? How many? 127 or 217 here in Tasmania, Victoria, 209 in, in New South Wales. What would happen to all the businesses that are renting those? 
you wouldn't think they'd be lobbying for it. You know what it'd be? It'd be UBI and we'd still have all this garbage on top of it. All the Centrelink on top of it. Guaranteed if it it would just be even more government expenditure and waste. So let's keep going. The findings come after millions of Australians were forced to rely on some kind of regular welfare payment this year to survive the recession. Well, they let's put our tinfoil hat on. Is that part of the reason why this is all done? You know, why, why governments around the world were so eager to lock people down so you get accustomed to being dependent on the state? You know, destroy the middle class. It feels like that's, that's intended or not. That seems to be the consequence of what's happening through all this restrictions on the economy. According to Stanford University's Basic Income Lab, at its core, a UBI is a cash payment given to all members of a community on a regular basis, for example, every month, regardless of income level and with no strings attached. More than 3.6 million workers received JobKeeper payments between March and September, totaling nearly $70 billion, and 1.5 million were still receiving the payments after the program was revised in October. Well, yes, we've had a look at that. I mean, let's have a look here. This is the Job Seeker Boost. Here, you can see... Guys, look at that, that climb there. That's the job seeker boost over 1.4 million, nearly 1.5. You've got youth allowances shot up and apprentices. Youth allowance other has shot up to over 150,000. And here's showing you how many people are on this, guys. Oh, nearly 1.5 million in October on these programs. And then if we look at the job keeper, well, job keeper has surged as well from 876,000 in April to 962,000. And the thing that really concerns me is if we scroll down here, this one here. The percentage of employed people on JobKeeper is nearly 9%, Victoria. So no wonder people are getting, you know, are liking the idea of a UBI. But what, how many people would do bugger all if we had a UBI? How many people would sit on their ass and not work? You know, I guarantee you there'd be more. More than people realize. You can't just magic stuff out of nowhere, guys. It still has to be manufactured. And how fulfilling a life would that be doing nothing? The number of Australians receiving, uh, we looked at that, there you go. Now, a first of its kind survey has found a sizable majority of Australians would support the introduction of a universal basic income. The survey was conducted by the research group YouGov on behalf of the Green Institute between the 14th and 18th of October. What is the Green Institute? Let's look this up. Green Institute Australia. Uh, here we go. Green Institute, Green Institute. What? Who are you guys? What is your political affiliate? I mean, they're, they're green. So here we go. The Green Institute is an Australian public policy think tank founded in 2008. The Institute supports green politics through education, action, research. Okay. It's part of the Greens. So lefty party. <laughs> the lefty party wants universal basic income. Of, well, it just goes to show their complete lack of understanding of the economics you know, you can wish it. I mean, come on. Is it just because they're playing to their base? Are they playing to their socialist, bloody, uh, champagne-sifting lefties that are probably on quite good money, you know, with a government job, unionized, haven't actually had to ever compete in the market and have got no idea, you know, and they're just more and more intervening in people's lives? The Green Institute is the official think tank of the Australian Greens. Well, I could have just read that sentence and found it out, couldn't I? <laughs> it is the equivalent of the Liberal Party's Menzies Research Institute and Labor's Chiefly Institute. Tim Hollow, the Green Institute Executive Director. Oh, there we go. My phone is looking up the Green Institute for me. Um, he said Australia had never been asked the question and he was interested to see the data. The survey question put 1,026 Australians... Okay, here's the question. Unconditional income support is sometimes called guaranteed living wage. It'll just, it'll just result in inflation. But I, I'm not surprised they don't understand that. Or a universal basic income. This means that just as we can rely on basic health care and education, everyone in society has a guaranteed minimum amount of money that they can rely on. Would you support or oppose a guaranteed living wage being introduced in Australia? Okay, here's the thing. It sounds good, but that universal basic health care that we can all rely on, everyone's paying for that. That comes out of our taxes. You, it's just redistribution. So where are you going to get the money off the people? What if, what if all these people get the, the UBI and you know, more decide not to work and just sit at home? 
and relax. Live the good life. You don't need that much to live a good life. You really don't. The idea of chasing piles and piles of money and you, you don't need that to be happy, not by any measure. I'm sure a lot of people would be very happy just getting a UBI. And it'd be all they need. So what happens then when our productivity goes down the toilet? Oh, well, then they'll have to, they'll bring people from overseas who'll be exempt from getting UBI. That, that's, that's not going to end messy at all, is it? So the survey revealed 29% strongly support the idea. 29% somewhat support the idea. So that's where they get their 58%. 8% strongly oppose. 10% somewhat oppose. 19% neither support nor oppose. And 6% don't know. The YouGov survey also asked the question, another question for the Green Institute. It says, for every job advertised in Australia, there are at least 15 job seekers when the survey was taken in October. Given this imp information, to what extent do you agree or disagree that we should provide universal income support to those out of work, i.e. without the requirement to apply for a, for a certain number of jobs or to complete a specific number of hours of designated work activity? So they want to get rid of, they want, they want to get rid of the requirements, mutual obligation for welfare. 23% strongly agree, 27% uh, somewhat agree, so 50%. 11% strongly disagree, 14% somewhat disagree, 20% neither agree nor disagree, and 6% don't know. Mr. Hollow said the results were fascinating because support for UBI was remarkably even in Australia across demographic groups, including gender, age, income, and employment status, dropping below 50% only in the highest age bracket, 49% support among people over 75 years old. So they're the, they're the generation that, uh, that may have a little bit more lived experience. He said support for the idea was demonstrably higher in Victoria, 65% support, 13% opposite, than in other states, which may reflect the state's protracted lockdown or the, the significant leftist ideology in that state. Or also the fact that if you combine JobKeeper and, and well, let's combine JobKeeper and... Um, civil servants you've got 23 percent there only beaten by by um northern territory in victoria the public sector is 2.1 million people no sorry sorry 4.8 million people only beaten by new south wales everyone 4.8 million people then you've got on top of that you've got you know how many 8.9 percent so over 3.3 million people on job keeper and let's see what job seeker and then you know nearly half a million four hundred thousand on job seeker and youth allowance as well in that state no wonder you've got so many people wanting to support this government free money i don't know this just scares me this just really it's going to be an insane intervention into your life and sure they'll say no strings attached but then the greens you know what it'll happen it'll get tied into your social credit score oh sorry you've expressed an incorrect political opinion your UBI central bank uh, currency, uh, digital currency has been docked 15%. Yeah, good little pleb, behave. I know that's quite a dystopian future that I'm painting, but I am looking forward to Cyberpunk 2077 when it goes on sale. And the bugs are ironed out. So it's always struck me that in politics, more broadly including from some people in the union movement, there's a strong held opposition to the idea of UBI. But when I talk to people at barbecues or when I've done door knocking, that kind of thing, the idea often comes up and people are really interested and excited by it. Because it's free money! People want something for nothing. You'd be stupid not to take it. But it's just going to inflate away everything. <laughs> but, um, oh, come on. Is this where Australia's headed? Are we heading down this path? Just a UBI nation of bludgers. Is that what, is that what we're turning into, guys? And you think... People think we can compete with other countries. People are talking about bringing manufacturing back in Australia. Yeah, yeah, bullshit. We're going to bring manufacturing back in Australia. People are going to sit on their ass on the UBI and not work. Yeah, sure. Come on. Oh, I'm not going to get out of bed for, for less than $100 an hour. When I'm on my UBI, yeah, we'll get eaten alive by other countries in the world. Come on. So, there's this sort of suppression of the idea that goes into our political conversation. But out there in the real world, people 
have always kind of thought it makes who who have thought it makes sense yeah people who just want free shit that's the ones who think it makes sense come on so where does the idea from universal basic income come from it's a stupid idea that's been good i'm gonna calm down so we can the idea is not is not new 500 years ago thomas moore discussed the idea in his f- fictional work utopia yeah read you Uto- everyone should read utopia it is a fantastic work it is very good to read and and but th- it's not just ubi isn't the only one magical thing that came out of utopia you had the society divided in strict class groups you had the children raised by the state you had chunks of people's ears cut out if they were a criminal so you could identify them you had slavery in utopia okay it's not a universal basic income bloody fantasy here read the damn thing come on because yeah you know that's what will degenerate into you get this then you're the government's bitch that's what it's going to be then they'll be able to control every aspect of your lives and people here are bitching and moaning because you know with the welfare card you you can only spend a certain amount on stuff you want you know some of you got to spend on food it'll all come into this it'll be the exact same thing So, and generations of philosophers and economists and revolutionaries have proposed their own version since. Yes, because they want to fool the stupid masses to vote for them, to support them, to take up arms them for the fantasy of free shit. Today, there are multiple pilot projects running in numerous countries hoping to understand how a UBI can redress persistent poverty and inequalities. Okay, it can't. I'll tell you now, it will fail every single time. It's failed in Finland, we've seen it's failed in finland it'll fail the only way the well no the only way we are found to address poverty and inequalities is the free market it has lifted more people out of poverty in the last century than to any time in human history even the last 20 years the quality of life of the average person now is phenomenally higher than other people people are worried about this third world fantasy parts of africa are now more advanced than australia high quality of life ubi advocates claim it can reduce or eliminate the bureau no bullshit eliminate the bureaucracy around welfare and government work programs yeah and if said high enough can provide everyone with a basic income to avoid poverty you want to get out of poverty you got to work you want to get people working you get the government out of the way this is not going to help what this would do imagine if we had a ubi what that would do to people trying to find work how many employers are struggling now to get people to work when you've got the job seeker boost how do you think that'd be how do you think we'd compete on a global scale for wages they said people could choose yeah uh, what would it do to our currency as well they said people could choose to top up their UBI payment with paid work if they wanted, or they could live off the UBI by doing volunteer work, social and community activities, artistic pursuits, and other unpaid work such as caring responsibilities. This is a fantasy. Life doesn't work that way. We're a part of nature, guys, that you're always going to have to have some people working. Look, look at the, the anarchist communities that just fail, you know, where everyone's an artist and, and just makes pieces of crap in the desert that falls around look at look at all the uh what was it those communities over in, in israel the, what is it the kibbutz or whatever they've all fallen apart you know it's all yeah come on this has failed so many times why are we doing this again so a growing interest in ubi roger putney an associate professor of sociology at the university of wollongong and Ben Spies Butcher, an associate professor of sociology at Macquarie University, have an interest in UBI. Of course, because it's paying the bills. It's getting articles written. You know, they can, they can, even this, I'm sure it will meet some KPIs at the University of Cited Work. It won't be as prestigious as presenting in a, a journal, but still, hey, it ticks a box. Am I, am I just getting too cynical with all this stuff, guys? Earlier this year, maybe I'm too old, that's it. Earlier this year, they submitted questions to the Australian Survey of Social Attitudes, a nationwide, national, nationally representative and weighted survey on the topic of UBI because they wanted to know how Australians felt about the policy idea. 
You need to ask people what understanding they have about economics and politics before you start asking them questions about stuff like this. You're just offering them free money. Most people don't know anything. Most people are so politically apathetic here in Australia, they flip-flop or they just vote the same way over and over again. Most people don't even know how preferences work in this country. Most people don't even realize that the state debt that their, their leaders are, are taking on their behalf is something we'll have to pay. They think it's their problem. And you ask him questions like this. Come on. Maybe we need to go to utopia. Let, let's just do your utopia. So then, you know, you don't get saved from everyone. No, no, no. You get, you'll get assigned your class, guys. You know, it's only the philosopher kings are the ones that are ruling over us. However, the questions they submitted to uh, AUSSA were the same question that had been asked on the European Social Survey on UBI because they wanted the data to be internationally comparable. One question was quite specific, telling respondents what a UBI would mean in practice, including on the subject of taxes. A basic income includes all of the following. The government pays everyone a monthly income to cover essential living costs. Yeah, where does it get the money from? It replaces many other social benefits. The purpose is to guarantee everyone a minimum standard of living. Everyone receives the same amount regardless of whether or not they are working. People also keep the money they earn from work or other sources. This scheme is paid for by taxes. Yeah. Won't happen. Won't happen. You'll get... You... <laughs> There'll be a lot of special interest groups that would tear this thing apart. Come on. Is anyone so naive to even think... Th the problem is... This won't be possible, the idealized version. We'll get some bastardized version that'll just be bolted onto the back of our current welfare systems. And it will take something which is meant to be an emergency payment to make up for the fact that people don't have any reserves to stop them from resorting to crime or destitution into, you know, a lifestyle choice. That, and you don't want that because then you get intergenerational poverty. Do you think people are going to aspire and work and better themselves when they can sit on their ass and get this? What do you think that's going to do for the future of our nation? Overall, would you be against or in favor of having the scheme in Australia? They said their survey was run over the first half of this year, so it captured Australians changing attitudes to UBI as the COVID shutdowns were introduced and prolonged. They recently received the raw data from the survey, and they're currently analyzing it in preparation for a journal article to be published next year, but the data seems to complement the Green Institute's YouGov survey, they said. The rate of support for UBI was probably around 43 to 45% before COVID, and YouGov survey has picked up a jump in support, he told the ABC. There's a pretty decent set of evidence that COVID has brought more interest and sympathy in the UBI. Because <coughs> people want free money. Or, well, no, the state has destroyed people's ability for independence. So how would Australians spend their time? I can tell you, sitting on their arse. Mr. Um, Puttonley said the ASUS survey, which needs to be analyzed properly, also asked the trains what they would do with their time if they began receiving regular basic income payments. Would they continue to work as much as before or would they spend more time doing other things? Very roughly about a third of people suggested they'd stick to their old routine. I have bullshit. So if they're working full time, they continue to work full time. And if they're working part time, that's what they, they'd keep doing, he said. About 5% said they'd spend more time working, which was surprising. About 15% said they'd spend more time socializing with friends and or family or volunteering in community activities. That's Come on. You've got a generation that are least politically involved now, actually joining political organizations, volunteering in the community. 11% said they'd spend more time exercising like walking, hiking or doing sports. It doesn't cost you anything to walk or hike. You don't need money to do it. You can find time. Roughly 4% nominated creative hobby hobbies. So that includes art, writing, performance, dance, theater, and media making like films and websites. You just do it. You find the time to do this stuff, guys. You get up early. Come on. What's that? What's what that's telling us is what people really love to do. Yeah, they love to get free stuff. For not doing anything, no responsibilities, shock, horror, gasp. I really hope this wasn't a funded research project. I hope they didn't get external funding for this. I hope it's funded. I guarantee you they did in some way or another. 
so. Um, is to get out and about... Fit- oh, who cares? So back to reality. Mr. Hollow from the Green Institute said, apart from the question about UBI, the YouGov survey showed half of Australians feel there should be no conditions on unemployment income support at the moment, at least while job seekers outstrip, outstrip the number of jobs available by huge margin. At the beginning of the pandemic, mutual obligations for income support were suspended and their reintroduction is already causing great hardship with payments suspended to 234,000 people, including 9,100 homeless people and over 12,000 First Nation people, he told the ABC. Well, that's the thing. You've got to meet your obligations. This isn't UBI yet, guys. Sorry, comrade. You've still got to work. You've still got to fill out a form. You've still got to apply for a job. It's clear that Australians recognise that these conditions are pointless and it's time to leave them in our past and move on together. The political conversation in Australia is built around an assumption that people like the surveillance-based welfare system that punishes and stigmatises people on income support. This should well and truly squash that assumption and open up space in Australia for a different path. A path that sees us looking out for each other, helping each other. Yeah, you can't do that when the government takes your money off you forcefully and then redistributes it without your consent. That's the thing. People are saying, oh, you know, it's a social contract with taxes. No, it's not. There's no, um, it is a contract forced upon you as a child. And people don't seem to realize what they're forcing on future generations. At least it doesn't appear our leaders are now. So what do you reckon, guys? Are you a fan of UBI? Because I, it really doesn't sit well with me. I think the consequences of it, if it is going to be implemented, will be much worse. It'll just mean a huge growth in the welfare system. It will mean a whole lot of people sitting on their ass and not working. And it will mean Australia's competitiveness on a global level would get even worse. Could you imagine hiring someone for a job going, I don't need to do that. I I earn more on my UBI. What do you reckon, guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below like share or subscribe to the channel should people work for their money or should we just give it to them for none seriously anyway we're not in a post-scarcity world guys anyway thanks for watching if you're a fan of the channel and want to support the content i create here there are a few ways you can you can join us on youtube or patreon you can support us using our affiliate links at amazon ebay independent reserve or aussie broadband you can buy a merch from heiser says use gold pass from the perth mint or support us via paypal Take care, everyone. I will see you all next time. Bye for now.